Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another video. Uh, it's summertime. It started here in the UK, and I'm wearing a scarf. There's much more uh, interesting problems to solve than that. So if this is your first time to the channel, let me introduce myself. My name is Ben Cardle, author of the best-selling book, The Monographs, which details the real-life skills of Sherlock Holmes if they were to exist in the 21st century, how to develop them, how to go about creating this skill set for yourself in order to make it work for you and those around you. And I now spend my days teaching people from all over the world, in all walks of life, how to do it for the security and protection and betterment of themselves and others. Here at this channel, we look at uh, videos from real world, from the media, from film, from TV, uh, and as well as a bunch of fun other experiments to do with this particular skill set. So if that sounds like something that's up your street, do subscribe to the channel and uh, hit the bell and all that other 21st century stuff. Um, on today's cards, we have um, a, rather, a rather bleak interview, but it should provide uh, an, a detailed study in lie detection because the, you know it's it's a buzzword that's that's thrown around with almost reckless abandon in that most of the uh, the media portrayals and uh, articles that exist by people who uh, in my humble opinion uh, don't really know what it is to detect a lie there is a belief that you can spot two or three items that are differentiation from somebody's baseline and then that adds up to deception when there is so much more uh, to, to this than one video could possibly, could possibly detail. Um, so I, I would urge you just to if you hear this type of stuff or see this type of stuff, uh, take it with a pinch of salt because there is a number of other factors that going that go into being able to successfully spot whether somebody is lying to you or not. Um, it's not just a simple case of, oh, I spotted this expression. Oh, I spotted this movement. Uh, there is no single Pinocchio effect that where this means this in anything so we have to examine the uh, the greater context for a further understanding of of the deeper meaning let's not forget that our context here is we're dealing with very minimal levels of information unless you're directly involved in the case or you've been following it uh, yourself for a for however long you've been following it, right? You'll you'll have a you'll have more data on that particular thing. So today is um, an interview from uh, CBS this morning. It's with Wade Robson and James Safechuck, the two chaps that crawled out of the woodwork to um, level accusations at Michael Jackson regarding child abuse. Um, now I would imagine. Uh, I don't know what time of the day this went out on telly, but just because I know uh, uh, through some of the newspaper articles what type of things are discussed, so that may pop up. I haven't watched the video yet myself, so just consider that um, a warning. You know, if it, if this is something that you don't like to talk about, hear about, uh, for obvious reasons, of course then I'd, I'd consider stopping the video now, just in case. Safety first. But with that in mind, here we go. Wade Robson and James Safechuck are featured in an explosive new documentary that premieres this weekend on HBO. Both men also sued the Jackson estate, but their lawsuits were dismissed because of the statute of limitations. They are appealing that. Jackson has always denied any inappropriate behavior with children. Robson and Safechuck told us about their relationships with Jackson, including very graphic allegations of abuse. A warning here, some of these details are quite disturbing. There we go. 
Before you all met Michael Jackson, what did he mean to you? I saw the making of Thriller. Just instantly became obsessed. I wanted to be just like, and I dressed like him every day, and did my hair, and had my hair permed to look like him, and you know, all that stuff. I wasn't necessarily a big fan. And then when I got the commercial. Mr. Jackson? They, they the Pepsi did, commercial. Yeah, the Pepsi commercial. When you see me meet him, it's actually my first time seeing him. You know, at that point I was pretty excited. It was um, otherworldly, I guess. James Safechuck and Wick. So what we've got there already is um, a lot of confirmation between the two. I'm already, I'm already uh, suspecting some collusion here. They're, they're virtually mirrored in their displays which is either in, in a couple of camps. Either this is just how they sit, right? This is just how they sit. Or because they are so practiced, so in tandem with each other, that they would mirror each other's movements. Um, the, the, uh, the hands clasped over, over Wade's legs and the hands on top of one another on James's, it's akin to hand washing uh, in the realms of uh, of pacifying and the like due to nerves, which would which one would expect when um, recounting tales of the abuse you've suffered, right? But uh, is is also things that we would see when uh, when you when you're being deceptive, not telling the truth, right? When you're doing it in a public domain. I also look at the difference between the two characters. And uh, I, I refer to them as characters mostly just because um, Wade stands out in terms of his his behavioural flaws at the moment. So you look at somebody who's that crafted, that attention, uh, that level of attention to detail regarding their image, um, the work the work that he's had done on his skin. I'm almost positive they're hair plugs. I've only seen a few seconds of the interview, though. It's all striking of uh, of somebody who's who's very money hungry. Uh, very much like uh, the male version of what we would call in the UK a wag, which is the uh, you know the traditional sort of footballer's wife, who live via their status, via what they believe themselves to symbolise. James just looks like a, a nervous guy at the minute. But there's definitely a, a, a collaborative internal discussion going on between the two. But again, as I say, it could be shared experiences, could be shared stories. This is the nature of what I'm talking about with lie detection. Robson discussed the intimate details of their relationships with Michael Jackson. Everybody wanted to meet Michael or be with Michael. In the upcoming HBO documentary, Leaving Neverland. That's the name of Jackson's ranch, where Robson claims seven years of sexual abuse with the world-famous performer first began. I mean, this was just the most magical thing I'd ever seen. And that first night, Michael just kind of took us on a little bit of a tour. And he said to me and my sister, you can stay in one of the guest rooms or, or you can stay in here with me if you want. And my reaction was, of course, I want to stay with you. We had one more night that way that myself and my family were going to leave and go on another kind of vacation to the Grand Canyon. Mm -hmm. I... There's a lot of what I would call um, incongruences already in his behavior. And again, please don't take this as gospel because this is just an observation of a single uh, of a single element from a single side of the story, right? Very little information. But when we deal with somebody's um, illustration in their behavior, we can go on a tour, we can do this, we know that in his directional cues, he has a comfort with two-handed movements, so that when one is clasped to the side and another continues, and then another is clasped to, clasped to the side, and then it continues, uh, this falls into the realm of, uh, of tension and release. In pacifying your way through a tense, um, 
through a tense story that you're about to tell, something that makes you feel a degree of anxiety. Again, no way to differentiate at the moment whether that is recounting of abuse or recounting of a story that you've made up, because both would display a level of anxiety. I just don't think at the moment, with the observations regarding his character, that that gives more credence to um, the recounts of abuse, purely because uh, there is a, a, a period uh, during his life where, um, a, a, again, I, I think he was, uh, I think because I've seen the Macaulay Culkin footage, I think um, he was part of that initial trial and he spoke in Michael's defence, uh, which is, is nothing unheard of in terms of uh, abuse victims being controlled, but the waiting till his passing is... I need more information. I was devastated to leave Michael. Michael was devastated for me to leave. He actually sobbed. So you got to stay. So I got to stay. And so it was just Michael and I in Neverland for the next week. And your parents allowed that? My parents allowed that. Mm -hmm. Within either the first or second night. What you've got to... What, what, you've, what you've got to think about here is the nature of um, the nature of false memories in this display right there is a long long time between the incident that he's recounting and um, the retelling of the story in this particular moment so if you look at the I probably have to uh, fact check the name I believe it's Loftus um, who uh, researched it in, into the misinformation effect and the way that that relates to um, questioning victims and witnesses with regard to interview technique for police officers. If you're not questioned properly, you can be led into developing a false memory about the scenario. Over more time, by more people that are involved in his life, those that he has to listen to, both parents and wants to listen to, uh, Michael, in this situation, is going to curb the way that you review this image um, when looking back on it, are you looking back on it through uh, stories that your parents have told you? Are you looking back on it through stories that Michael has influenced? Right? That's just something to consider when dealing with uh, a story that very much revolves around, is this true, let's condemn somebody, or are these lies, let's condemn these guys. You need to, you need to have a, a heightened degree of uh, verification about what's going on. Of Michael and I being alone at Neverland, the night started changing. One of the ways I remember it starting is, um, you know, Michael just sort of starting to touch my legs and touch my crotch over my pants. It progressed to him performing oral sex on me, him showing me how to perform oral sex on him. Did it scare you? A lot of asymmetrical movements uh, in terms of his his shoulders and uh, how he's talking about the particular uh, things that went on. Um, what I don't understand is his internal uh, his internal dialogue regarding this. Right, if this is something that um, it's going to be quite harrowing. Right, I believe would be the better word um, for a child, harrowing uh, to go through. So it's going to be, I, I struggle to imagine that whether you've told this story once or a thousand times, I struggle to imagine that it would get easier to tell, right? Because you're, if, if this happened, you are recounting something that was horrific, you know? In the same sense, like if if I give you an example from my life, it's not anywhere near um, the the topics that are being discussed here. But when I had a, a car crash that almost killed me, I know that I can't talk about that without feeling something and it reflecting in my behaviour. I'm very well aware of that. But there's nothing that's going on here uh, in in the leaking uh, of of a stronger of a stronger emotional palate. So. You know, you can't account for the fact that he may have uh, imploded and become almost numb 
to the scenario because that's a definite possibility or the words that he's saying are, are words that don't really mean a great deal to him. Who did you think it was wrong? A couple of days prior to, to, to the abuse starting, he started touching me just in the sense of like, hand on my leg, lots of hugs, kissing my forehead, rubbing my hand. So there had been this kind of development of physical closeness that was happening already that felt like a father, it just felt amazing. As Michael started doing these sexual acts, he started talking to me about God brought us together. We love each other and this is we how we love each other. We love each we other. And uh, even in his vocals, the vocals haven't changed. There's no uh, reflection of any sort of um, uh, emotional change. Everything's remaining, hmm. At, at this level, you can hear the moisture in his voice doesn't change. You can hear he's not breathing any differently. You can see he's not breathing any differently. There's no physical change that way. This is how we show each other our love. James, you're nodding in agreement to what he's saying. Tell me what happened to you. He introduced me to masturbation. He said I taught him how to French kiss. Um, and then it moves on to oral sex. But it's Are not... you frightened or thinking this is weird or wrong? No, no, it's in the context of a, a loving, close relationship. There's no alarm bells going off in your head or, or any thoughts like that. Really, it's just... See, the, the, the lack of any anything going on between the two of them is another thing that makes me think uh, a, a, a collaborative effort between the two. Same stories, virtually. Confirmation nods of from Wade, yep, yeah, this happened. Or, oh, yep, yeah, you're doing well. Or, oh, yep, yeah, I recognise this. I love this person and, and uh, th we're trying to make each other happy. He said, no, I was his first, but even as a kid, you don't even know what that means. So you're lovers and you're best friends. What does that mean, James? You're in a relationship and you're lovers. You're a little boy. Right. And he's, he's a 30 something man and you're a little boy. Cause at that age, how do you even know what that means? You, you don't, you just feel really connected to someone and you just love them. There's definitely, a, you know, an almost um, Milgram-esque quality to um, the, the the nature of celebrity. Uh, even more so when you look at the the relationship between adult and child. Childs are taught to listen and respect your your elders and all the rest of it, you know, to varying degrees throughout varying cultures uh, and and whatnot. So there's there's definite uh, there's definitely that element to it in terms of um, the control that may have gone on and it's tough to break that kind of um, innate quality that we all have in response to those that we perceive as being uh, matters of authority in our lives intensely the public in general thinks it's violent that it's very painful but what you're describing is totally the opposite of that i mean he didn't beat me he didn't you know he never said mean things to me um it was all we love each other in spite of what they're claiming today in 1993 both robson and safe chuck denied being molested by jackson when allegations were brought by another boy, Jordan Chandler. That case settled out of court. You all both tell a very descriptive story about you know, sexual activity with Michael Jackson, yet when you were asked to testify in 2005, and, and Wade, you did, you got on the stand and you testified in his behalf and vehemently denied that any sexual activity had taken place. Yes. Why did you do that? The training, Michael's training of me to testify began the f See, that was a weird smile. That was a weird smile. Michael's training of me, which, which again, can, can go on uh, from, some, from somebody that holds that kind of Milgram-esque uh, position of authority in your life. You, can, you have that capability of being able to mold behavior 
you do. However, it, it takes, uh, you know, a, a high degree of behavioural insight, um, a high degree of awareness in not only everyone else around you, but these these um, these boys that they would be at the time. Um, and I believe it's a matter of public record. So don't quote me. Uh, I'm just going off what I remember from years ago, that he was on more drugs <laughs> than, you know, most pharmacies. That level of lucidity to control behaviour in that way that you would need is, is, is not something that I believe he would possess. Which is something that speaks to that. So for me, that casts a little bit of doubt in terms of uh, what he's saying about being trained to tell the truth. Uh, sorry, trained to hide the truth um, in this in this scenario. And looking at his hair closer up there, I'm almost positive that that's fake. First night that he started abusing me, he started telling me that if anybody else ever finds out, we'll both go to jail. Both of our lives will be over. The 2005 criminal trial of Michael Jackson centered on molestation charges brought by a child cancer survivor named Gavin Arvizo. Court testimony shows that from the stand, Wade Robson denied ever kissing, showering, or even cuddling with Jackson. You know, they credit your testimony in part for Michael's acquittal. You know, you were called really a star witness. You, you withstood a blistering cross-examination yeah. and he was acquitted. On some level, do you feel guilty about that now? Do you think about that? Yeah, I do think about that. See, the do you feel guilty about that now is a question that assumes that they are telling the truth. You need, you need better questioning here um, in order to get uh, a more... Uh, no, sorry, in order to get a less controlled answer is the, is the words that I'm trying to say, right? It's, uh, it's in the same way that, um, that when hypnotists ask you what's more stuck, this or this, the assumption is that you're stuck. You just have to decide consciously which is more stuck in the scenario. So in asking Wade whether he felt guilty about that now, the assumption is that he was controlled um, into into perjury, uh, lying under oath, which gives him um, a, a, a stronger box to stand on to tell his story. I have and I do. I wish that I was ready. I wish that I could have helped Gavin Arvizo receive some justice and some validation for what happened to him. It was just like what happened to me and just like what happened to James. And I wish that I could have played a role in, at that point, stopping Michael from abusing however many other kids he did after that. Do you think that there are others out there? I do think there are others out there. Um, but, but I also don't expect them to just come out now that we're coming out. It's such a difficult thing to do to come out. You, you have to do it when you're ready. We can't change what happened to us. It happened. It's done. But what can we do with it? Okay. So that might be an indication towards uh, a, a, an implosion regarding uh, how he feels about uh, being abused, which to some degree is, is quite rational. Uh, being rational about being abused is, in my experience uh, of, of researching uh, and, and, and talking to people who've been abused, that's like saying to them, uh, two plus two equals the Batman symbol. It, right? And, and I'm, I'm not saying that, you know, those that haven't been abused can't use that to try and um, spread a message, do some good in, in that sense. But there's a lot of things that are, are working against these guys here. In particular, that, that permanent expression that's that's on James's face because the the emotion that the pantomime is trying to display 
is not seen anywhere else, anywhere. So there's a forcible level of control to that. And you can see that, and you can see the control uh, when the eyebrows are released. When you say, "No, I do think there's more," you can still see those marks. Now, how can we provide comfort for other survivors? That's what this is about. And Michael just happens to be the guy, the abuser in this child sexual abuse story. Now, you know, we talked to the Jackson family yesterday, and they say these men, we should point out again, according to the Jackson family, they're admitted liars and opportunists who are now trying to capitalize on uh, Michael Jackson's uh, death and exploit, exploit the Jackson name. Neither one of these men were paid for appearing in the documentary. They will get nothing for appearing, but they think it's important, they say. Okay. Now, I... I... The whole not appearing, uh, sorry, not uh, getting any money for their appearance, that doesn't bear any relevance to me in terms of uh, bully for not. Mostly because um, these kind of tactics go on behind the scenes. Uh, I've said it before and I'll say it again, like when the, when, if you've ever watched uh, a, an episode of a magician on telly that goes, um, uh, so we've we've never met before. We haven't spoke. We haven't uh, prepared anything in advance. And the person goes, "Yep. Yeah. Oh, great, awesome. You know, we 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 we'll just take that as gospel then." <laughs> uh, okay, fair enough. They may very well have have not been uh, paid for their appearance, but why would that bear any relevance to their? Uh, their appearance as truth tellers or the sympathy that they should be getting for the story they have to tell I, 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 that bears no relevance uh, in, in terms of denying confirming or changing um, observations about them moving forwards it's it, it, you could say that in terms of a tactic to try and imply that well i'm not getting paid i'm just coming to tell my story spread the message um it's it's happened uh, a number of times. Look at uh, what's gone on with A H, you know the, uh, the, uh, the 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 millions of dollars that she apparently gave away, right? It's it's that same kind of tactic but in reverse. So yeah, let me know what you think. Um, the reason there is no conclusive answer to this is because there can't be. Um, we we could formulate ways of, of questioning them moving forwards based upon these observations to uh, to confirm to deny to change um, anything that we've uh, figured out uh, about this I, I i believe i was quite uh, straightforward with what i believe based upon the information that i've seen but again it's it's only on this video and, and nothing more there might be there might be different levels of information out there that that change this opinion there might be other information that adds to it i'm saying that these are the details that can be seen in this video we should take that and move it forward in terms of uh, reaching a, a veritable conclusion so yeah let me know what you think down in the comments guys i am i am interested to know uh, if if you enjoyed the uh, the let's let's call it the educational angle because it's it's tough to imply enjoyment given the, uh, the the topics that are discussed that's not really a nice thing to say um, so if if you got something out of uh, the educational angle do subscribe to the channel and uh, yeah above all uh, I hope you guys are keeping safe and well out there we are we are coming close to the end of what feels like lockdown 12 here in the UK uh, only a couple of months to go before British people show the rest of the world just how badly we can screw this up again. <laughs> I'm quite cynical when it comes to that. Uh, so yeah, hope you have a hope you have a great day, and I shall uh, talk to you all soon.